Alright what's up guys, today I'll show you a horror thriller film, The Possession. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with the old woman standing in the living room. The old woman's face expresses curiosity and fear in her surroundings. She sees an unfamiliar box inside the room and has a Hebrew carving in front of it. At first, the old woman ignores it for a while and continues doing her chores. She then goes to the mirror to fix herself. However, when she runs her hands through her hair, part of it falls off. She thought that her hair falling off was caused by the old wooden box. A random idea comes to her. She gets a hammer and attempts to destroy the box by smashing it. However, the left side of her face begins to sag. Eventually, a mysterious shadow knocks her down on the floor. The mysterious shadow begins to throw her around the room violently and knocks her down unconsciously. Meanwhile, the old woman's son arrives at their house and discovers his mother lying on the floor. Presently, the divorced father arrives at his ex-wife's residence to get the two daughters for the custody terms weekend visit. Father enters the residence and he is surprised to see that mother's jewelry designs have already replaced his office staff. Father becomes upset and tells mother that she should have waited for him to clear his stuff by himself. Mother answers that it is not necessary, since father does not live in residence anymore. Father escorts the two daughters to his car. Mother follows them and reminds father what the two daughters should eat. Father respectfully dismisses mother and tells her that he got everything settled. Eventually, father welcomes the two daughters to his new house. While they are having their dinner, the younger daughter expresses her amusement at the new home. She then suggests that they should invite her mother for breakfast sometimes. The older daughter dismisses the younger daughter, explaining that their parents divorced three months ago. Father explains that they got divorced because things were not going well for them. And right now, they are trying to move on from their lives. The next day, while driving, the older daughter spots a garage sale and tells father that he needs to buy dishes for the new house. As they shop at the garage sale, the younger daughter finds the old wooden box. After shopping, father pays for the stuff they pick, including the ancient wooden box. Unbeknownst to them, the one who is having a garage sale is the son of the old woman mentioned at the beginning of the film. While father and the older daughter settle their purchases, the younger daughter sees a car approaching the residence. The doctor gets out of the car and looks at the younger daughter mysteriously. To her curiosity, the younger daughter walks around outside of the house. She comes to a halt in front of a window, seeing an elderly woman inside a room that is wrapped in a bandage. The old woman screams as she sees the younger daughter holding the ancient wooden box. The doctor enters the room and pulls the curtains close. Back at father's new house, the younger daughter admires the ancient wooden box. She then asks father to open it for her. Father attempts to open the ancient wooden box, but he fails. Later that evening, the younger daughter attempts to open the ancient wooden box for the second time. To her surprise, she accidentally pulls a latch and opens the ancient wooden box. Inside, the ancient wooden box has a built-in mirror. She also finds a dead moth, a ring, a miniature calf, and a tooth. She wears the ring on her right middle finger, then goes to sleep. The weekend approaches again. Father drives the two daughters to his new house. As they arrive at the house, the younger daughter tells father that her sister will be part of the dance performance at school. Father says that he will be there watching and supporting her sister. Eventually, the two daughters enter the house. To their shock, they see food from the fridge scatter on the kitchen floor. Father checks the kitchen and finds nothing. Suddenly, a mysterious shadow goes out through the pet door. Father informs them that he thinks is just a raccoon. That same evening, while the younger daughter is sleeping, the ancient wooden box opens and seems to call her name. The following day, father goes to the younger daughter's room and tells her that breakfast is ready. He sees the younger daughter sitting at her table, and in front of her is the ancient wooden box. The younger daughter is looking straight at the box's mirror. To father's surprise, he sees that the reflection of the younger daughter's face is sag, and her eyes are all white. However, when father approaches the younger daughter, her face is all normal. While they are having breakfast, the older daughter is telling a story about their dance practice. Father notices that the younger daughter is eating aggressively. Father tells her to slow down. As a response, the younger daughter growls at father. She then stabs father's right hand with a fork. Father screams in pain. Suddenly, the younger daughter realizes what she does and apologizes. Father commands her to go back to her room, and she does so. Later in the evening, while the older daughter is brushing her teeth, she finds moths inside the medicine cabinet. She screams and goes outside the bathroom. Father hears her scream and goes to check on her. The older daughter also sees moths at the foot of her younger sister's room door. As father and the older daughter open her room, they are shocked to see tons of moths flying around the room, while the younger daughter is silently sitting on her bed. 
Father then takes the younger daughter out of her room. The following day, the pest control service helps them clear father's house. After some time, father calls the older daughter and apologizes for missing her dance performance. Father promises the older daughter that he is going to make it up to her. The older daughter is mad at father. That is why she let the younger daughter talk to father. The older daughter warns father not to go near her or touch the ancient wooden box during the conversation. Eventually, the father's curiosity, he goes to the younger daughter's room and checks the contents of the ancient wooden box. Meanwhile, at mother's residence, the younger daughter is in the bathroom. She looks at her right hand and sees the ring she wears from the ancient wooden box, almost bruising her right middle finger. As she raises her right hand, she feels the need to vomit. She checks her throat with a flashlight. To her shock, two fingers appear from the inside of her throat. The next day, the school principal and the teacher call father and mother because the younger daughter aggressively attacks a boy student. The principal tells them that the younger daughter seems to be distant with her friends, not doing her assignments and losing interest in the things that were once so important to her. Father thinks that the younger daughter's behavior is affected by his divorce from mother. Eventually, the teacher adds that the younger daughter's violent behavior might be caused by her obsession with an ancient wooden box. She thinks the boy student tried to steal the ancient wooden box from her. The teacher recommends that she keep the ancient wooden box away from her for the time being because it isn't doing her any good. The teacher then decides to keep the box at the school. Later in the evening, the teacher is working late in the classroom. Suddenly, she feels the urge to open the ancient wooden box. Droplets of blood fall to the floor, surprising the instructor, and she discovers the blood is coming from both of her eyes. She tries to leave the room, but the door closes by itself, eventually locking her inside. As she screams, a mysterious shadow violently throws her around the classroom and finally throws her out of the window. Following that, at a fast food restaurant, father talks to the younger daughter about her weird behavior, but the younger daughter dismisses him. She asks father to get the box back for her. Father asks her why the box is so important to her, and sometimes she talks to it. The younger daughter tells him that she talks to a mysterious shadow who keeps telling her something special. Father feels disturbed by the younger daughter's behavior. Father decides to get rid of the ancient wooden box. When father arrives home, he discovers the younger daughter weeping and inquiring about the ancient wooden box. When father declines to inform her, an unseen force slaps the younger daughter, giving the impression that father is hurting her. The younger daughter flees, discovers where the box is, and begins a conversation with it. Eventually, moths fly out from the ancient wooden box and then into the younger daughter's mouth, taking over her soul and body. The younger daughter passes out. Father finds the younger daughter and brings her motionless body back to the house, where policemen and mother are waiting to remove the younger daughter from father's clutches. After that, father returns to where he found the younger daughter and gets the ancient wooden box. Father later brings the box to a university professor, identifying it as a dibbuk from the 1920s, which was meant to hold a dislodged soul, an ancient Jewish demon. The university professor also explains that he needs the Torah, the first part of the Jewish Bible, to exercise and defeat the demon. After that, father undetectably enters mother's residence. He enters the younger daughter's room and starts reading the Torah to her, trying to exorcise the demon out of her. The younger daughter looks at father coldly. Eventually, a mysterious shadow throws the Torah across the room. Suddenly, mother returns home, forcing father to withdraw his exorcism. Father then drives to a Hasidic neighborhood, where he discovers from the Jewish that there are three stages to possession, the third of which involves the dibbuk latching itself to the host and merging with it. The Jewish tells father that the only way to vanquish the dibbuk is to use a forced ritual to lock it back into the box. The Jewish then finds the demon's name is Abizu. While inspecting the ancient wooden box more, he says it means a taker of children. Later in the evening, mother catches the younger daughter devouring food like an animal out of the refrigerator. Younger daughter brutally beats mother. The dentist proposes that the younger daughter should see a psychologist for her uncontrollable behavior. The following day, the dentist gets ready to take the younger daughter to the psychologist. When the younger daughter looks at the dentist with hostility, the dentist's mouth starts pouring blood and his teeth start coming out, leading him to flee in horror. The younger daughter then collapses in the front yard. Eventually, mother and the older daughter bring her to the hospital for magnetic resonance imaging. The lights start to fluctuate throughout the surgery. To their surprise, mother and the older daughter are shocked to see the Dibok's visage living right next to the younger daughter's heart in the imaging. Mother finally understands that the younger daughter is under the state of possession. Father and the Jewish arrive at the hospital to perform an exorcism. Father and the Jewish enter the younger daughter's room. The Jewish remarks that they need a private room to perform the exorcism finally. 
Father then leads Jewish mother who carries the younger daughter and the older daughter to the physical therapy room. Jewish man then asks the older daughter and mother to light seven candles. The Jewish then gets a bowl of water. The Jewish then asks father, mother, and older daughter to put something valuable inside the Dibba as a way to contain the demon's power. Mother puts their family picture, and older daughter cuts her hair and puts it in the Dibbuk. While father seems to leave nothing inside, but a big condom for joking. Following this, Jewish remind everyone that once they begin the exorcism, they must complete it. Jewish eventually put the oil of two olive trees to the water and draws a towel to it. Jewish woman then wipes the towel on the forehead of the younger daughter. He then begins the exorcism by speaking Jew. On the other hand, father read the Torah while mother and older daughter help in holding the younger daughter. Eventually, the younger daughter escapes after breaking free and attacking Jewish. Father pursues the younger daughter and finds her in the morgue. Younger daughter attacks father, and he defends himself by telling the demon to take him instead. Finally, father manages to escape the younger daughter's onslaught. After this, Jewish mother and older daughter find father embracing younger daughter. Mother and older daughter eventually join the family hug. However, Jewish find it hard to believe that the demon vanishes immediately. Jewish man eventually calls the demon by yelling its name. After this, father begins to act differently. Mother, older daughter, and younger daughter realize that father is now under the state of possession. Mother, older daughter, and younger daughter separate themselves from father and join the Jewish in performing the exorcism. While Jewish perform godly rituals, an unseen force aggressively pins father to the wall. Jewish continues speaking godly phrases. The dibbut moves closer to father. Eventually, a small grotesque figure of a demon is forced to crawl out of the father's smelly mouth and finally returns to the Dibbuk, which marks their effective exorcism. The movie ends as the family reunites happily and father and mother's hormonity is restored after the incident. Meanwhile, the Jewish drive away with the Dibbuk. However, shortly after dialing father, a truck unexpectedly slams into the Jewish's car, instantly killing him. After landing several feet away from the debris, the Dibbuk is discovered, indicating that the evil box is once again waiting for its next host. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.